Lord, just give him the words that you want him to speak this morning. Let him know where it is you want him to go this morning, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's good to be here tonight. Tonight. <laughs> Come here tonight. Come here tonight and be ready to party with God. You can't just feel like that. Just, you're going to just party with God. I thought that was a prophetic word. It's been a great time in Australia. It's been a good time here in this church. Uh, just such a freedom here. I got my friends here today. Right, Christian? Right? It's a good day. It's a good day when you have new friends, you know. New friends in the house of God. Uh, just go like this. God has something for me. You know, God wants to heal you some way. Some way. Somehow. He wants to touch your life. He wants to minister to you. Supernaturally. Sometimes you need healing in your pocketbook. You know, Jesus, one third of Jesus' ministry was healing. Jesus healed the sick everywhere he went. He helped people. Say, he helped people. And when people came to Jesus, they were helped. They were healed. All they had to do was ask Jesus, can you help me? Help me. Help me. Son of David, have mercy on me. You know? And then we make it so hard, we cry out and cry out and cry out. And sometimes we need a miracle or sometimes we need a healing. Sometimes we need a deliverance because we've got demons in our lives. Right? Sometimes there's a problem with demons. You know, sometimes I've had money, my money's been attacked by demons. And I had to go, devil, get your hands off my money. Yeah. Right? Sometimes my body's been sick, you know? When I was first saved, I was a cigarette smoker. I smoked about two packs a day. And I, I smoked into my salvation and I would stand in front of the church puffing smokes. Chain smoker. And my lungs were fried. And I went to get baptized one day. And my lungs were gone because I was doing drugs and smoking all kinds of drugs. But when I got baptized, the fire of God went through my body. It felt like a flamethrower. It was stuck in my head. And it, went, it healed my lungs. My lungs were totally healed. It was a miracle of God. Because I breathed like this. <laughs> when I got saved, I could barely breathe. Because of all the drugs I did. There's nothing, you know. I'm forgiven. I'm healed now. God just... And I got out of that pool and I could breathe like this. Before I breathed like this. I got healed. And the day that I got baptized in water, I had a bad knee from playing soccer for 10 years. It used to pop out all the time. I got healed. God healed my knee. It was like, bang. I was in Pakistan one time and I was praying for people at a crusade. And uh, a woman, there was a woman that was blind. Her eyes were white. Listen to this. Her eyes were completely white. And I was, had about that much faith. I had about, and I just go, help God do something. I look stupid. I want to run and hide. And I prayed for her and I said, help, Jesus, please help this lady. And her eyes popped. Her eyes went normal. She could see so healing and miracles are for today. And, and we're supposed to be doing the same miracles and the same healings that Jesus did. That's why it gets boring in church. You know, last night was powerful, huh? Because he got touched with the power of God. You know, that there's another healing. A healing in the heart. A healing in the soul. That inner healing. That's healing from the sickness of sin. Sin's a sickness, I'll tell you. When I got saved, I realized, oh, I feel good now. I feel good because I met with Jesus. I met with Jesus and He healed my soul. He healed my broken heart. You know? Turn your Bibles to Luke. Luke 5, verse 12. You see, God wants to heal us. He wants to touch us. He wants uh, to minister to the needs in our life. But because we live in a day and an age where we just go to the doctor and and we just put up with our sickness. You know? Sometimes we get to a point where we put up our, with our sickness. You know that? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command that growth on Bruce's back to dissolve right now. I command that foul spirit to let go of his back. In the name of Jesus, I command it to, that, that growth to dissolve off of 
his spine right now. In the name of Jesus, let go of him, you foul devil. Get off him right now, Jesus. Amen. Lord, aid him right now with ministering spirits. Amen? Amen. The devil loses every time. The devil is a loser. The devil's a liar. The devil, the devil came to rob, kill, and destroy. Jesus came to give life and life more abundantly. Verse 12, Luke 5, verse 12. While Jesus was one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. In the Bible it says leprosy, sort of like sin, you know. In the New Testament, if you spiritually translate it, you can call it sin, you know. Sometimes we have leprosy in our lives. But this guy was really sick. He had leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Jesus never turned anyone away. If you come to Jesus, say, help me. What happened the other night? He said, help me. The cops picked you up. They said, no problem, buddy. You're out of here. Amen? I was in police stations all the time. I said, Jesus, help me. But I wasn't willing to commit my life yet. I wasn't in the place to say, Jesus, I'm going to give you my life. But I still said, help me, Jesus. And boom, the door of the jail would open and I'd walk out. But I wasn't giving my life to Jesus yet because I hadn't fallen on my face. This guy fell on his face. I am willing. Be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. The sin, the sickness. This guy was so excited. Imagine having leprosy and being healed. Today, sometimes we have leprosy in our lives. And we have to, as a Christian, you have to daily ask God, help me, forgive me, change me, touch me. It's not a, a one Sunday, it's not a Sunday, it's not a religion on Sunday. It's a relation, relationship on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, where you're walking with Jesus, talking with Jesus, Help me, Jesus. That's some of the best prayers you can say. Help! Some of the greatest prayers I've ever prayed was not a long prayer. It was, help! Help! And God came. He said, what do you need? I can't handle you screaming at me like that. You know? Some of the greatest prayers I've just, help me, God. Help! Help! And it moves God's heart to touch you, to heal you. Jesus was moved with compassion. To, and He's moving with compassion to you. And He's moving. And, and when you see that love, your faith goes, Whoa, I believe that person can help me. But people saw Jesus. And they saw that He could do it. When you see an evangelist come to the church, never speak against them. Because usually with the evangelist is the gift of healings. And when people speak against the gift of the evangelist, they're speaking against the gift of healings. Because usually the, the office of the evangelist has the miracles or the gift of healings on them. So when you want to get healed and you see an evangelist, you run to that evangelist. You say, help me. Not that the evangelist can heal you, but the power that comes through the evangelist can heal. Amen? Amen. But you have to ask God. It's so simple. I just tell people, look at Jesus. Look at the cross. Close your eyes. Right now as you're healing. It's not, oh, it's gone. You know? Jesus ordered that. Don't. And sometimes it takes time to get healed. I've prayed for people over and 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 over until I was like, tired. And they got healed. And then I prayed for people a long time and they never got healed. But then there's the gift of miracles. When we were worshiping, I saw Bruce's back. I saw inside his back and there was something on his back. Inside. The Lord said, rebuke it from the pulpit. Rebuke that spirit. Sometimes your sickness is connected to demons. You know, cancer is an evil spirit. It's an evil spirit that attacks beautiful people. See, the devil, Jesus never made anyone sick in the Bible, did he? He never laid hands and made you sick, did he? Hallelujah. 
Don't tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priest. He said, go to church. When you get healed, go to church. Go tell your pastor. Amen? <laughs> I got healed. God wants us to be healers. Like Jesus. He wants to, us to be like Jesus. Laying hands on the sick. Amen? News about him spread all the more. So crowds of people came to hear him. And he healed their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. People heard about healing. And what they do? They brought the sick. Why? To be healed. See, I'm going back to America. God told me, when you get back to America, start to do healing meetings. When I get back, all I'm going to focus on is little healing meetings. All over the place. Renting out halls. Because there's a revival coming. There's a revival coming. That means people are going to be healed. It means people are going to be saved. People are going to be touched. When you get healed, you're like, yeah, I got healed. I got healed. Who's been healed in here? You know, sometimes we forget. Were you healed last week? Come on up here. Come up here. Because if you don't testify of your healing, what happens? <coughs> Jesus said, don't tell anyone. Why? Because he didn't want to get in trouble early. And go to the wrong place, you know. He didn't want to get hurt early. Amen? What happened? See, Jesus heals. Jesus heals. Isn't that good? Give God a hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go down to verse 8, uh, verse uh, 17 in the middle. And the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. See, we can do nothing unless the power of the Lord comes upon us. Or the power of the Lord comes in a room. Or in a place. I used to take youth out on the street evangelizing. And I'd take these youth out and I taught them how to pray for the sick. These are teenagers. 14, 16, 17, 18, 20. These are youth. And I taught them how to hear God's voice and pray. I taught them how to cast out devils. I taught them... But I didn't know much. I just tried my best. You know, I didn't know how to teach them to do these things. I just sort of said, let's go do it. We went out one night and there was a guy and he dropped dead in a McDonald's. Had a heart attack. And he died. It wasn't a McDonald's, it was a burger place. He died. He dropped dead. People ran out of the burger place. And I'm sitting there witnessing because they have cups with John 3.16 on the back. On the bottom. I said, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. And then I hear screaming. And I walk over there. And as I do, two of the youth in my team grab this man that was dead and said, in the name of Jesus, we command you to live. And the guy goes, Bruh! but he was dead. His wife said, he's dead, he's dead. And boom, the guy gets up. Ooh, big Samoan guy. And I, I got a little mad. Wait a second. I was supposed to do that. But it was the 17-year-olds that did it. You know? So we need to move in His power. Amen? And we need to let His presence move. You see, I believe that healing in Australia is, is going to be a key to revival. Because many of the great evangelists have come here and get, got fought. People fought them. The demons fought the evangelist because the evangelist comes to heal. Amen? The evangelist is sent to heal, to bring salvation. See, when you meet Jesus, you get healed right here. You feel better today? You feel better today? Come here up here, brother. Come on. Who's bold enough to come? Do you want to come up here and testify what happened last time? See, there's another healing. It's a healing of salvation in your heart. Right here, you get healed of all your sin. Sometimes it's in your body. Someone's knee is being healed today. Say that. Someone's heel is being healed. I am bringing my healing power upon you. For I want to heal you and restore you. 
I want to break the power of the devil that has tormented and made many sick in this place. And even in this town, many will be healed and touched by my presence and my power, says the Lord. Someone's knee is being healed today. It's a sign. Someone's knee. You're just going to feel like a heat go right through your knee. And uh, God's healing you. Amen? See, it's easy. We make healing hard, but it's easy. Jesus says it's easy to... It's easy. What's easier? Who knows what that scripture... What's easier? Which is easier? Say your sins are forgiven? Or to say, get up and walk? What's easier? Jesus was saying, they're both easy. But they just can't get it through their fat heads. That <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can't get it through your head. Healing can't get through here. Healing's got to go through you. You've got to believe down here and receive. And God, the devil's scared of the Australians because Australians are crazy. They'll do crazy things. If you get them, if you get them pointed in the right direction, they're dangerous because the devil wants to keep Australians sort of in one direction. You know? The devil's been trying to hold the Australians, but he's not going to do it. He's not, there's great churches being launched out of this country. In fact, I want to get connected with an Australian church in America when I get home. You know why? Because they're pioneering. They're willing to do different things. Amen? And see, you in your life need to get healed right here. Because if you don't get healed right here with the sin, or you don't get healed in your body, you won't glorify God. See, when I, get, I have to testify today that I was healed in my lungs because I have to glorify God. I want to keep my good lungs. Amen? I've seen healings all over the world, but that's not by my hand, it's by His hand. The apostles prayed. He, they said, Lord, Father, stretch out your hand and heal and perform miraculous signs and wonders in the name of your Son, Jesus. Why? Because healing brings people to Jesus. When people see healing, they will say, I want to be part of that. I want to be part of what God's doing. Healing is one of God's greatest desires in the church. Healing. Healing the heart. Healing the emotions. Healing the mind. Healing the body. Healing the bones. Healing the blood. Amen? Because He wants us to be involved. And a lot of times we... I've spent hours reading and doing a lot of study on healing. And the Lord this morning told me, Neil, you gotta, you got to press in again to the healing. Because I've seen visions of wheelchairs being emptied. I've seen guys get out of wheelchairs. I saw a guy in Australia a couple of years ago get out of a wheelchair. And the pastor runs up to me and says, Stop! What are you doing? Stop! Stop! What are you doing? You're getting someone out of a wheelchair. That doesn't compute with my mind. You're in trouble now. Why? The power got hit the guy. And he says, he's full of arthritis. He gets out of his wheelchair. I feel great. I feel great. And the pastor comes up and pushes him. He goes, sit down. And he looks at me and says, don't do any of that stuff in my church. I said, what? Amen, brother. So we have to do what Jesus did. We have to let him heal us too. Who wants to see a miracle? You want to see a miracle? I do. All the time. At Jim's church a couple weeks back. This woman, 20 years her back was hurting. And God healed that. Sometimes God healed people. And sometimes we need a miracle. Sometimes we need a healing. Sometimes we need salvation. You know, some of you today you need salvation. You need healing right here. You know, the greatest thing. You want to come up here and see what happened last night? Come on. We had four people. We, this brother, this brother gave his life to the Lord the other night. Christian did. This guy, when he got home last night, you got a lot of joy, didn't you? Were you healed in your heart? Amen. 
See, healings like that, your son's going to be touched today. You know what? Your daughter. I'm sorry. This is a healing tap. I broke my bottle. It fell out on the concrete. And I saved some of the oil and I started praying over this towel. Like Paul the Apostle had aprons and things like that. Why? Because the presence of God can rest on something like that. You just have to have faith like a little kid. You know, we get so intellectual. Praise the Lord, you know. We're so, I'm so spiritual, you know. I know all the Bible. I memorized half the Bible. Well, memorize one verse. For God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son. That's not that. That's for your daughter. You don't need to get funny. God's going to touch you. I've seen cancer heal. I felt the power come on my hands. Today I feel an anointing on my hands. Jesus used to lay say, You shall lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. What's going to happen? Say it louder. The, the sick shall recover. I shall lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. I shall lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. I shall lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. You don't need a degree for that. You don't need to be a pastor for that. You don't even need to be an evangelist. Those that believe in my name, they shall lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. Listen, when I laid hands on you, Christian, last night, I felt, because when I was 15 years old, I was a drug addict. I was dealing drugs. I was doing drugs. I felt horrible inside. I thought there was no way out. I went to church when I was a little boy. I saw religious crosses. People, oh, God, if you're like this, I don't ever want to go to church. And that's, I grew up, and I went to a black church once at 11 years old. They're going to praise God. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And the girls, whoa, yeah, I tell you, oh, the Lord is good. And I'm sitting in there, and I heard the voice of God. And he said, go to the front and give your life to me. At 11 years old, I was so scared. I said, no. I said, no. And for the rest, from 11 till 21, all hell broke loose in my life. Witches were after me. They were putting curses on our family. It was evil. And I should have had an 11-year-old with me. Oh, praise you, Jesus! Hallelujah! I should have run up to that altar and said, I don't care what's going on. God, I give you my life. Yeah. Yeah. You can ruin your life. You can ruin your life and be sick all your life in the last day. Say, Jesus, I give you my life. And be healed on your last day and go to heaven. But you miss all the fun in between. It's fun. Last night was fun. I had a good time, right? Last night was fun. People were getting saved last night. Christian got saved last night. This man, this young teenager gave his heart to Jesus. That's one of the greatest miracles in the universe. Salvation. This girl right back here in the back, she gave her heart to Jesus. All she needed to do was a little pep talk and a little just pray like this and he's right here. Bam. And Jesus is right in there. I'm coming in, setting up shop, new wallpaper on the walls inside your heart. You know, he's just sort of, we're going to fix this place up, paint it and make it look nice. Amen. Right now, in the name of Jesus, there's an angel standing by your husband. There's an angel ministering to your husband. And the power of God's going right through his spine right now. In the name of Jesus, the power of God is destroying the devil's work. Because the devil has wanted to flatten your husband. But God's going to raise him up. And he's going to be a preacher to the nations. He, when he gets healed, make sure you get him out of the house. Because he's going to preach the gospel. And, and great miracles shall happen through his ministry. Yes. Hallelujah. I just saw that angel standing by his bed just going, just sort of laying hands on him. You know angels can go heal people? Yes. You got to be the right angels though. You don't want those 
weird kind. Amen. <laughs> Amen. See, God wants to heal. And he wants to heal through you. Who has a back problem? Stand up. Who has a back problem? Stand up. You want to be healed? If you got a back problem, just stand up. Loosen up a little bit. Let's do that. And then just say, Jesus. What do you want to say? Ask Jesus to heal you. And then raise your hands to him. And then ask him to heal you. A back problem. Stand up for your husband. Right now, this is for you. Raise your hand. Say, Jesus, touch my back. Right now. In the name of Jesus. The power of the Lord is present to heal. There he goes, right there. Right there. Father, just heal these backs right now. In the name of Jesus. Just say, I receive my healing. All pain must go. In Jesus' name. See, it's easy. It's so easy. You just got to look at Jesus. Just got to focus on Jesus. Jesus. Does that feel good or what? What do you feel like a heat? Isn't that good? Lay hands on your mom's back right now. Yeah, right there. Everyone pray right now. Amen. How's your back? Is it healing? Come here. I need a catcher all the time. Just receive. Don't think too much. Just receive. Just heal my back. Say, heal my back, Jesus. Brand new, Jesus. Out of heaven. Heal my back. Right now. Brand new back. A brand new back in Jesus' name. Fill her, Lord. Right now. Fill her, Lord. Right now. Jesus' name. See, it's so easy to heal. And we make it so hard sometimes. See, God, heal that back right there, Lord. Heal that back. Someone's stomach. God showed me a vision of someone's stomach. Amen? Amen. Someone's stomach is being healed today. Who is that? Is that you, brother? Who's, who's back? You're, stand up. Be healed. Be healed. I saw a stomach. Yes. Stand up. As much as you can get. We're just going to have a healing service here this morning. Amen? See, don't worry about people falling down. That's just God loving them. That's called, I call it falling in love with Jesus. And when you fall, you fall in love. Amen? It's just, don't worry. It's, don't worry. Just be healed. Say, be healed. Put your hands on your stomach. Say, stomach, be healed. Isn't that easy? Say, Jesus, heal my stomach. Feel that heat going right down your arms? You feel that? It's the Holy Spirit. You feel that heat? You're being healed right now. God showed me your stomach at the beginning of the worship. You feel that? You're going to feel heat all today. It's going to be like a hot pot. You know? Amen. More, Lord. See something? It says in the Bible that laughter is good like a medicine. Amen? Many times we come to church and we're talking, Hallelujah. We must be religious. Just look at everyone real mean when they walk in the door. No, we gotta be happy. We gotta have joy. We gotta laugh. Why? Why do we need to laugh? To have strength. What else? We need to laugh. It's a medicine. It's medicine. The world's depressed out there. We're the Christians. We have Jesus. Jesus joy. And Jesus isn't a sad Jesus. We've had all these paintings of Jesus. You know that? A man of many sorrows. A man of many sorrows. Oh, just be sorrowful. No! Jesus was a man with joy. He wept and he had bad times. But he was filled with joy too. Amen? Some of you just need to laugh. You gotta laugh yourself happy. Amen. Let it go. Let go. <laughs> Let go. Amen. Jesus. A little response here. Amen. See, Jesus laid hands on the sick. We lay hands on the sick. Who's sick and wants to get healed right now? Who's sick? And get up here. Just run up here. Say, I'm getting healed right now, Jesus. You sent this guy. Now use him. You sent this guy. Now use him, God. Say, you sent him. Say, 
Now he uses it. Okay. You've been healed. What else have you been healed? Jesus healed me. I had this thing going on the back of my knee. It started up above the head of the pin. And it gradually got bigger and bigger. And, and it was most unusual. You know those like the basic things you use in the show? They used to catch on it when I was washing myself. And I was in Lynn's swimming pool and my granddaughter was there. And I said, have a look at this thing on the back of my knee. And she touched it with a pool. Yeah. I said, I didn't say touch it, look at it. And I turned over and she looked at it and she said, oh man, I don't know what it is. And I said, well, what does it look like? She said, well, it looks like a mole. But it isn't a mole because it's hard in the middle. It's, it's funny, go and see the doctor. Whatever you do, go and find out what it is. And then, at Lynn's place, you pray for people's needs. And the next morning, when I woke up, I put my hand in to feel this thing on the back and it came off in my hand. Ow! <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> so I went and threw it in the toilet and pressed the button. <laughs> and I was healed. But I do have a problem with my leg though. Okay, I step back one step. I have a, a membrane running on the back of the okay. toilet. And it's causing every tooth to sleep. Well, reach up your hands and give me a new... Take it away, Jesus. All the bad stuff. To heal my eyes. Brand new eye. Burn through my eye with your Holy Spirit and do laser surgery on my eye. Jesus, you're the great physician. Right now, glorify your son. Burn through that spinal cord right now. Burn through that spinal cord. Just 
say, do it, Jesus. Do it, Jesus. Heal my daughter, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. See, Paul the Apostle took aprons and handkerchiefs and he prayed over them and he gave them away. And through those handkerchiefs, not because they're all, but because of the presence of God. So people were healed. We destroy cancer right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, release your love and your compassion right now. We have the faith. We just need more love. More love. Fill her daughter right now with your presence. We lay hands on her. We lay hands on her daughter. We destroy the works of the devil right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Here, hold this. Yes. is super. If you're willing, he takes us natural people and he puts his super on us. It's like being a pancake. Who likes pancakes without syrup? Huh? They're horrible. They're, they stink. They're no good. But a pancake with syrup is supernatural. Because then it tastes good. See, this woman has been praying for her a long time. That's why she's so fired up. She's fired up because she's been agonizing for this woman's daughter to be healed. Amen? The power of God, you can't explain it with your mind. Amen? How's your back to me? Sister, how's your back to me? Yeah. It's better. Let's praise God. Let's give God glory to God. How's your back doing? Good? It hurts still? Okay, come on up here. Let me pray for you. Who else is sick today? Anyone else sick? Come on up here, brother. It still hurts. Lower back? Up in the upper back. How did you hurt it? Car accident? Uh, were you partying? <laughs> okay. Well, I was in a lot of car accidents, and I wasn't very nice guy, so I, I deserve that car accident. Okay, just reach up to Jesus. Say, Jesus, heal my back. Can I put my hand on your back? Lord, in the name of Jesus, heal this back right now. Right now, hold this very good. Just receive healing. Just receive it. Say, I receive my healing. Take away my pain. Jesus, I don't want any more pain. Heal my heart. Heal my family. He's healing your family. He's healing your family. Hallelujah. He loves you. Everyone say, we love you. You're special to us. He's healing you and he's healing your family. He's healing you and he's healing your family. It's okay. It's okay. You're precious to God's heart. He's healing your heart right now. He's healing your heart right now. Fill her, Lord, right now. Fill her, Lord, with your love. Holy Spirit, everyone pray right now. She's being healed. It's okay. It's okay. If you want prayer today, I want to pray for you right now. Keep praying. If you want prayer today, I want to pray for you right now. Come here, brother. Hallelujah. What's wrong, bro? Come here. What's wrong? Asthma? Recently? She's being healed right now. Feel that heat coming on you? Say, Holy Spirit, take care of me. Jesus, heal me right now. Put your hands on your chest. Step towards me. Say, Jesus, right here. Heal me. Jesus, right here. Father, in the name of Jesus, heal me. No more pain. No more pain, Jesus. Fix me. Fix me now.
little bit more? Okay. Hallelujah. Okay, Lord, just fill it. Be relaxed. Just more, Lord. Say more, Lord. Heal my chest. 100%. I want to leave this place by you healing me and me telling all my friends that you healed me. I promise. Yes. There he is. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. There's another healing. And that's the healing of salvation. Where it's your skin, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. God's touching your leg right now. Right there. Just touching your leg right now. He's touching your leg. I just see the power of God hitting your leg. going to heal your skin condition while you're praying. Before you go to bed, you're going to be praying one night. You're going to ask the Lord to heal you. The Lord's going to heal you in your bed. You're going to wake up the next morning. Your skin will be healed. There's a skin condition on your body. You'll wake up one morning totally healed. The Lord's healing your body in sections. The Lord says, I'm healing your body in sections. Because you have faith for sections. of Your body. And Lord just heals you right now. Just look at it. Look at the cross. Look at the cross. Just look at the cross. Look at Jesus. Say, heal me now, Jesus. Now receive. Oh, you got me. There he is. He says, shoo. That's what he's doing. Shoo. That's what he's doing in your life. Shoo. He's just healing you. Taking away the pain. Amen. <laughs> Hurting your feelings. Hallelujah. Okay, well, we're going to have Holy Ghost time now. Say Holy Ghost time. Let's move some chairs. Stand up. Loosen up. Get two tents. You've got to walk around. Start walking around. Start praying. Pour yourself a cup of coffee. But if you want prayer right now, I want to pray for you. Hallelujah.